for another day of working on the forging of our Damascus steel Kopesh for the Liam Hoffman collaboration. His links are down below. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be tidying all this up. It needs a little more drawing down. It needs the bevels forged. This needs cleaning up. I think it's going to be a pretty good day. So uh, uh, let's get cracking. Right, so we now have the integral guard slash bolster and the integral pommel forge. Fantastic! I'm really pleased with how this is looking. There's going to be a lot of grinding that Liam's going to have to do to tidy all that up, but I think it's going to end up looking uh, pretty, pretty killer. Now what I've got to do is I've got to tackle the rest of this. I wrongly judged the proportions when I was uh, doing my first bend. That's a little short. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, there seem to be a lot of kind of different examples with the proportions they have. That's a mistake I made. Would be nice if it was a little longer, a little more in line with what I drew yesterday. Oh well, what I'm now gonna do is we're gonna start working on the blade, cleaning everything up. Everything's still rather nice and thick right now. I wanna keep a lot of that thickness. However, I am indeed Rooney gonna start forging the bevels after a little more tidying. start putting a little bit of the of the curve in the Kopesh and I'm just gonna let the weight of itself do that by dropping it here over the horn and that helps yeah, that makes a nice neat nice neat bend it also saves you having to swing a hammer all you've got to do is swing a sword so going pretty well here it's a little thinner than I'd like but that can be compensated for uh, in the aesthetics and proportions of it by there being material ground up the width here still that'll leave an interesting enough kind of uh, interesting enough look there other than that i'm pretty confident that with some more straightening we'll be able to have that edge nice and centered this needs to come down and away here i need to bend right in there i need to bring that down and away so i can keep getting the curve that that kopesh needs This is one really, really, really tough project. I'm pleased that I stopped yesterday to continue it today, because it's taken, it's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm many hours in right now to tweaking and doing the smallest adjustments to get it right, and that's a big part of this kind of stuff. As you know, so when Liam grinds this, link in the description, make sure you subscribe to his channel so that you can see the videos when he makes them. 
when he grinds this, I, I, I want him to not have to grind too, too, too much off. You know, so I, I've got to make sure I do a decent job. There are a couple of issues with it. Now, I left this thick. That way he can grind into those bends and shape it to the way that he sees fit. Gonna make it look aesthetically pleasing. One thing that I regret, however, I made it too narrow here. That means that a lot of the nice width that we have along the blade is gonna have to be brought down so it still looks kind of proportional and aesthetically pleasing. You know, that's all right. I think it's still gonna look like a stunning, stunning, stunning piece. My next step, right, my next step is I'm gonna put it back in the forge. We're gonna run to this power hammer and I'm gonna take a relatively heavy pass and we're gonna flatten it all. Hopefully get it all flat. Maybe get another half inch to an inch of length out of it as a process. Make sure it's all flat, straight, the bends are right and we should be so close. So there is a slight twist here between the tang and the blade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make up a piece of tooling. I, my weld, I, I broke the nozzle on my welder, so I don't have a welder, so I'm just gonna have to lay it on there. But I'm gonna make some tooling that I can throw in the hydraulic press, squeeze it, hopefully that'll fix it. This is actually a piece of tooling I saw Liam Hoffman use on his Instagram page. a second now. Hang on a second. This is the weirdest thing that I have never experienced. Now, that's a carbide end mill, and I took it pretty hard there with the cut. And it is the weirdest thing, because the depth of the cuts kept changing. I was locked up there. I obviously didn't have the handle in here, so no vibrations should have been changing it. But then, on the tool itself, I saw some slight wear mark, and I think this happened. And I'd love you machinist types to let me know in the comments if this is a thing. When you push a carbide end mill hard, am I correct in assuming that because this is, this obviously is fluted, that if you push it hard, it's gonna try and dig itself down into the workpiece and therefore draw itself out of a collet if it's not properly tight enough? Is that a thing? Can you guys let me know? I'd be really interested to hear. Because that was a nightmare to mill and it is all disgusting in there. On the next one, I think I'm gonna do something different. Um, but, 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 but you know, I'm not a machinist. Like, that is just shock, horror, disgusting. So as I said earlier, I dropped my TIG torch and I broke that little ceramic nozzle. I've got a couple more on the way. So tomorrow I'll be able to TIG weld things, today I won't. So what I'd ideally like is I'd make up another plate here, weld this to it. However, what I'm gonna do, this will go like that. A workpiece will come in here, this will go over the top. And hopefully, the idea, the theory is, by squeezing down, this is going to straighten out any inconsistencies and hopefully make this perfect. Hopefully. We'll see. Into the forge we go. Right, so hopefully without pinching my fingers off, this will work. I've turned the speed of the press down a little lower, so hopefully that's gonna help us out. And we'll line everything up and uh, give her a little squeeze. You can see how much slower the press is. Hopefully this straightens things. Oh, 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 oh. Try the other side. Let's give her a go. Hey, that works pretty nicely. It looks a million times straighter. I'm gonna do one more heat. Oh, it won't fit. I'm gonna heat that up before it breaks. All right, let's give it a little bit of a tweak here. That needs some straightening so it all lines up. Gee whiz, this is difficult. We're gonna make everything straight to this. So what I'm doing is I'm just locking it in the vise and it's really helping me kind of just decide what is straight, what isn't straight. And the vise jaws themselves, to a certain extent, I guess, are gonna be straightening it, but I can then do whatever tweaking I need to do to get it right over here in my left hand. It's a really 
horrible shape to try and straighten. This is a tough project. I'm really interested to see how Liam grinds this. He told me to surprise him with the sword. And he also mentioned something along the lines of, you know, wanting a good challenge. So, uh, sorry in advance, Liam. I think I need a little more bend right in here. Which is a shame, because then that made that straightening redundant. I'm gonna put some more bend in there. Okay, I like that shape a little better. That's interesting now. Awesome. Oh, you can see the pattern peeking through. Look at that beautiful pattern coming through there. It's through the scale. Let's heat it up. It all looks pretty straight. I'm now gonna take another heat. We're gonna go to my big table and we're gonna really try and flatten the whole thing. Nerve-wracking stuff. Nerve-wracking stuff. So what is, my, uh, what is my plan of action here as I try and straighten it? For now, I'm just trying to indiscriminately, evenly hammer in the same places on both sides. And I'm gonna try and slowly get lighter with that hammering. And hopefully, a few more strokes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a look and I'm gonna see what I can spot. Any bows I can spot. And this is the most horrendous thing to try and look at for squares. There are bevels on there. There's Oh my goodness, it's bend this way. Holy guacamole. Woo! Holy moly! Oh, I'm not wearing my holy moly t-shirt, but you know what, you can get one? That's right, right there. Just right there, right? Yep, yep. I think it, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the normalizing cycle. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for cycle number one. Da, da, da. gentlemen this is the Kopesh the overall length here we're about two inches shy on the overall length about an inch shy on the length here materials gonna get way ground off there since that's all rough and the width here is gonna be thinned down but that's not gonna be done by me as I've been saying throughout the whole process that's gonna be done by Liam Hoffman an outstanding young bladesmith and blacksmith his channel links in the description below we're sending this off first thing tomorrow morning to him so hopefully over the next few weeks if you subscribe you will be seeing all of uh, all of his videos of grinding this and finishing all of this off And I'm sure you're gonna be entertained I'm sure you're going to learn a lot and of course ladies and gentlemen if you're new to this channel Make sure that you also go and hit subscribe and any of you guys that are interested in burners and striking anvils We got a whole pallet of striking anvils for you. We've also got burners up for pre-order dispatch kind of a uh, mid-october something like that So make sure that you also head to the main website the link is all also in the description. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you tomorrow.